Find something? Yeah, I wound up in some government think tank's upload directory. Here's your scenarios, ladies. These look like counterterrorism scenarios, war games developed for the Defense Department. What's scenario 12D? Airline terrorism? That doesn't make sense. Your father was murdered over a war game? What is scenario 12D? We know it's a war game scenario, that it has to do with airline counterterrorism. Why is that important enough to kill for? Because it's no longer a game. But if some terrorist group wants to act out this scenario, why target you for assassination? Depends on who your terrorists are. The men who conceived of it in the first place. You're saying our government plans to commit a terrorist act against a domestic airline? There you go. Indicting the entire government, as usual. It's a faction. A small faction. For what possible gain? The Cold War's over, John. But with no clear enemy to stockpile against, the arms market's flat. But bring down a fully loaded 727 into the middle of New York City, and you'll find a dozen tin pot dictators all over the world just clamoring to take responsibility and begging to be smart bombed. I can't believe it. This is about increasing arms sales. You said they intend to bring this down in the middle of New York City? What if there is no bomb? Well, how are they gonna bring it down? Remote access. Somebody on the ground's flying your plane. We need to know our flight plan. We're going to crash the plane into the World Trade Center. I'll tell the flight crew. These look like counterterrorism scenarios, war games developed for the Defense Department. What's scenario 12D? Airline terrorism? USA Today reports that in the two years before the attacks on September the 11th, NORAD conducted exercises using hijacked airliners as weapons. And one target was the World Trade Center. The North American Aerospace Defense Command, NORAD, conducted exercises with fighter jets, simulating hijacked planes flown into the World Trade Center in the two years before the attacks. And you'll find a dozen tin pot dictators all over the world just clamoring to take responsibility and begging to be smart bombed. I can't believe it. This is about increasing arms sales. Mm -hmm. This is all part of that massive new organization that the government has been constructing since 9-11. The new gold rush has attracted some familiar names, General Dynamics, Northrop Grumman, and some newcomers. Here's all of General Dynamics in the country. Oh my goodness. Slowly, they discovered a hidden world of military, government, and private corporations. This is a world so secretive, so large and unwieldy, that no one knows how much it costs or everything it does. Remote access. Somebody on the ground's flying your plane. Bogey, sir. Keep your course. It was an SPC subsidiary, Tridata Corporation, that oversaw the investigation after the terrorist attacks on the World Trade Center in 1993. SPC, according to their official website, specializes in many areas of defense technology production and manufacture, including a system developed by their radar physics group called the Flight Termination System, or FTS. This is a system used to destroy target drones, craft that would be fired on by test aircraft or weaponry, in the event of malfunctions or misses. This highly sophisticated war game technology allows the control of several drones from a remote location on varying frequencies and has a range of several hundred miles. This technology can be used on many different types of aircraft, including large passenger jets. This is a photograph of the flight termination system module from their site. Note it has a cylindrical shape and is consistent with the size and shape of the object observed under the fuselage of Flight 175. The Boeing lease deal involved the replacement of the aging KC-135 tanker fleet with these smaller, more efficient Boeing 767s, which were to be leased by Dov Zakheim's group. The planes were to be refitted with refueling equipment, including lines and nozzle assemblies. In this enlargement of Flight 175, we can clearly see a cylindrical object under the fuselage and a structure that appears to be attached to the right underside of the rear fuselage section. 
When seen in comparison, it is obvious that the plane approaching the Trade Center has both these structures, the FTS module, and the mid-air refueling equipment, as configured on the modified Boeing 767 tankers. Of particular interest is the long, tube-like anomalous structure under the rear fuselage area of 175. This structure runs along the right rear bottom of the plane. The equipment attached to the underside of the plane which hit the World Trade Center is identical in every single way to the Boeing 767s issued by Dov Zakheim. Another interesting piece of 9-11 evidence is the last 12 seconds of UA-175. Since every amateur videographer in New York City had their cameras pointed up at the Burning Tower 1, the second plane strike was filmed from nearly every conceivable angle. Expert analysis of this plane leads to some startling revelations. First, there is the expertly controlled flight characteristics of this plane. During its last 20 seconds of flight, UA-175 made a single corrective maneuver so perfectly timed and executed that it could not possibly have been piloted by human hands. The lone gunman ran uh, in 2001. That's right. Uh, 2000. We, we, it was a mid-season replacement, so we, oh yeah, right, 2001, we, we shot in 2000, January 2001, we started airing. When did you shoot the episode with the government uh, secretly hijacking a jet by remote control to fly to the World Trade Center? Yeah, that we shot in March of 2000. So that's almost a full eight months, nine months before it actually happens. Uh, who particularly wrote that episode? I, I think Vince Gilligan was the, the key, the head writer on that one. And who else was involved? And then it was uh, Frank Spotnitz, uh, John Scheiben, and then Chris Carter did a rewrite on that as well. On the morning of September 11, 2001, you see a plot from the TV show you were in, to some extent, coming through. What did you think on September 11? Uh, you know, I didn't even put it together till I got a call from one of the writers. It was uh, Vince, Vince Gilligan. He called and he said, are you watching this? And I go, yeah, it's weird, why are you calling? He goes, because the show. And then it took me a while to go, oh yeah, the pilot, good God, it's exactly what they wrote. And they were really freaked out about it, the writers. We were trying to imagine, you know, crimes that weren't paranormal, uh, that would involve serving terrorism, in this case, government-sponsored terrorism. And so we came up with the idea of running an airliner into the World Trade Center in Manhattan. As a writer, and particularly on the X-Files, that's the kind of stuff you spend your day doing. You're supposed to imagine the unimaginable and the unthinkable. We want to set these characters up as heroes who are going to, unbeknownst to all of us, save the world. What would be a, a terrible, horrible thing that could happen, unfortunately, was the World Trade Center. I have to say at the time, if it ever occurred to me, I imagine, well, of course the government has already thought about things like this. Of course there are systems in place to, you know, if we can imagine it, we're just, you know, Hollywood writers. There are people in the Defense Department in Washington, D.C., who are charged with defending our com country who think about these things and that there are things in place to defend us against it. And the morning of 9-11, I was directing an episode of The X-Files, and I woke up to see that on television, and my first thought was The Lone Gunman. And I, you know, of course, my first thought was, God, I hope, because I didn't know yet what had happened or why, but I just, I hope this has nothing to do with what we did on television six months ago. I hope we aren't somehow guilty of inspiring this or, you know, it became clear within hours that, of course, we had nothing to do with it. But um, it was a terrible, obviously very terrible feeling. When you live in uh, and work in a world that has so much imagination and then when reality just comes and sort of uh, slaps you in the face, it's it's scary. I actually could bring myself to even look at that episode again until until I sat down to prepare for this interview today. You know, what is it? Is it an inside track, a conspiracy with the writers of Lone Gunman? Or is it that they were tuned into the news and, I mean, Tom Clancy... Tom Clancy wrote it in his book, too, right? I mean, it was all there. It was already out there. And by uh, and this is what the writers of The X-Files uh, and The Lone Gunman did, is they were great at coalescing all of this information. You know, the show was popular because it hit on so many things, UFOs, uh, you know, creepy alien mutation, or, you know, all sorts of stuff, and bringing it into a collective, uh, like the collective consciousness into one single show.
I'm not going to touch this one. I'm going to give it to my colleague here, uh, Frank Spines, who actually had more to do with the Lone Gunman than I did. And Lone Gunman were created, uh, if you remember in the episodes, first season episodes, by uh, Glenn Morgan and James Wong. And then we did the TV series. Um, but Frank really had so much more to do with it, and especially that part of the storyline, I think he has a special uh, underground uh, connection. <laughs> no, actually, no connection at all. Um, but yes, Mark, Mark Snow is doing the score for the movie. But um, we're just looking for the most awful crime we can imagine, and it's as simple as that. And uh, I think all of us, I, I I hate to say that our first thought, my first thought that morning, September 11th, was the lone gunman. I was stricken with the thought that maybe we, you know, somehow inspired it in some way. And I was greatly relieved to learn the plot that existed long before that was on network television. And then disturbed that if we could imagine it, our government didn't. And, and I didn't understand why we were prepared for a tragedy like that. But, uh, yeah, it's been the subject of some conspiracy theories online, and, you know, we were directed to write it and so on, and it's just, uh, just an act of imagination like so many others we did at 1013. Dean, what do you think really happened on 9-11? I, th I think it was staged, and uh, I think it was, uh, you know, according to Jordan Maxwell, it's America's Reich's dead, and uh, it seems all the evidence is pointing there. You're not going to testify. You're going to let them cover this up. They almost killed me twice. They won't fail a third time. My silence will keep me alive. And you. I know you and your friends are fighting for the American dream. Just don't expect to win. <laughs>